Let us imagine our, uh, let's place ourselves into imagination of, you know, a desolate situation. So you wake from slumber, you feel your stomach tightening, cringing, turning, and you're like, oh, what the heck is it? And then you get a phone call, middle night, and it's probably, you know, either your best friend or your closest relative. And they're in desperation. They're calling you, hey, come help me, come help me, come help me. I'm here at the hospital, I'm waiting forever, come on. So you get there, and while you're sitting there, you know, they are pale, the skin is moist, and you know, it's full of sweat, and they're dripping down all over the place, and they're actually cold to touch too. And they tell you that they've been there for several hours, feels more like six hours that they mm. say. That. And while you're there, you look up and you see hundreds of people. That, my friends, is actually an overdramatic uh, over scene of hospital overcrowding. Mm. So, as you guys may know, I'm here to talk about hospital overcrowding. And uh, by the raise of hands, how many of you or know of someone that's been in the hospital waiting forever? Or, you know, anyone, anyone, anyone? All right, all right. So, it's not the best situation, right? Um, so as you mean, me and I know, I'm an EMT, and I witnessed many patients sitting, you know, waiting at the hospital, inside the hospital for several hours, and every time I bring like a third or fourth patient, oh no, those same people are still waiting, and every single patient that I bring in, it's another additional hour. So with all those hours accumulated, you know, and that's, that's here at Pomona Hospital, mm. and that sucks watching all these people just sitting there for so long. And so today, you all will learn about uh, some examples of why hospitals overcrowd, um, the effects of overcrowding, and not only that, but uh, what does the staff do to uh, reduce the time. First of all, I'll talk about uh, potential ca causes of overcrowding. Uh, second, like I said, uh, we'll, okay, excuse me. A government organization called CDC, uh, also known as the Central or Center for Disease Control, uh, posted on the website in 2017 of the which stated the National Hospital Ambulatory Medical Care Survey, which was for the 2015 era. Um, they actually got statistics from the Hospital Care Statistics Branch in 2015 that surveyed 475 hospitals. <clears throat> Out of those 475 hospitals, uh, 136 million, 136, nine, or sorry, 136.9 million visited the hospital. Mm -hmm. While injury related, so like your car accidents, oh, someone cut their finger off, stuff like that, was 39 million. And for the ER visits, actually being admitted is 12.3 million. And, and for critical care was 1.5 million. So in total, in a grand total, only 9% of those people were actually admitted into the hospital. So with that many people actually going into the hospital, that's a very, very overcrowded. Right? Doesn't help that uh, I interviewed Alex Vallejo on August, sorry, excuse me, on April 21st, 2019. Um, about his, uh, his 911 calls and stuff. He's a paramedic. Mm -hmm. And he stated about, he has seven to eight calls on average for, uh, for the 12 hours. So each calls, you know, give or take an hour, two hours long. Um, he stated that out of, those, uh, out of those, only four can probably actually go to urgent care wow. and go there instead of going to the hospital, which causes additional overcrowding. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Now, I'll talk about some effects of overcrowding. So according, oh man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So according to several personnel who have studied in the medical field, or are in the medical field, uh, Ms. Claire Morley, Mariah Unwin, Gregory M. Peterson, John uh, Stankovich, uh, Leah Kinsman, wrote in the emergency department overcrowding uh, systems causes reviews, consequences and solutions in two, uh, August 30th, 2018. So they stated that 
uh, it raised mortality rates, it raised assessment and time for a patient to be cared for, and it, it also did stress, you know, for the staff, so it makes everything 10 times worse for the employees, and not only that, but violence towards staff. Hmm. In my perspective, I've had so many different people um, actually complain and try to fight the hospital staff, and that's no good, not wow. the best situation, and I either have to go in while this, uh, the security is not there, and you know it's it's not the best situation. So lastly, I'll actually talk about. Uh, well, actually, I'll continue to talk real quick about the uh, the lengths of uh, holding the wall, which is putting out the hospital. Um, so the average time for people to actually be seen by a doctor is 23 minutes. Uh, to actually time being spent before going home is actually 168 minutes, and time waiting to even be inside our hospital room, 144 minutes, or yeah, 144 minutes. That's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So that was conducted by uh, Lena V. Gregor, Mike Tigas, and assistant manager uh, editing, CC Way, in article ER Weight, uh, Weight Watchers in 2019. And lastly, uh, some uh, ways that the hospital kind of like helps out with that is that the hospital staff will try to do their best to uh, triage, which is organize people into different sections. And another situation is where they have to divert the hospitals um, and divide, divert, divert us and the firefighters to go to another area. Um, Unfortunately, we'll have you that's time. Yeah. Sorry about that. Let's give it up.